Hello, I'm Celine Fox, partner at KPMG in Ireland. Welcome to Business and Finance Executive Insights Series in association with KPMG, where we speak to business leaders about their insights into strategy, success and overcoming challenges. Today, we are delighted to be joined by Sean Sheehan, founder and CEO of WiseTech, a global leader in IT, asset disposition, reuse and manufacturing services. Some of you may know Sean was nominated for Business and Finance Person of the Month for January 2023. Sean, you're very welcome and thank you so much for joining me here today. Firstly, Sean, huge congratulations on the award of being Business Person of the Month. And maybe you could just tell me a little bit about what you think lies beneath that and maybe your contributions or the strategies that have been effective for you um, in terms of that recognition. Well, thank you, Celine. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Business and Finance um, for being nominated. Uh, greatly appreciate it. I suppose getting back to your question, I think um, in the current environment mm -hmm. where companies are constantly looking at uh, the environment, ESG, the whole green economy and all that, it is important that there's um, a medium there to be able to dispose of, of likes of IT equipment. So WiseTech would, would play a lot in the circular economy. So what that does, it enables companies to dispose of their IT in a safe and secure fashion. So we'd like, we've spent a lot of time in that area, especially around data sanitization, and it gives, like, the, the, the whole tech um, industry is growing so quick, it's evolving at a huge rate. So, like, there's a lot of used equipment out there, companies are, are, are having difficulty uh, keeping up with it in a lot of cases. So, like, what the area we play in is very important. And I think it's important as well for the data sanitization around legislation and all that, that Companies can't just dump stuff anymore now. Like the, 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 there's a responsibility there to their themselves and also to their employees. So we we play in that field as well. So I think that's very important. Excellent. And that's really interesting because yes, sustainability is top of the agenda. You know, for for most organisations out there, you know, we look at boardrooms. It is one of the the key topics that's been discussed every day at board meetings. Um, so that's you know really interesting to see the role that you're playing as part of that whole sustainability agenda, and it is really at the forefront of uh, sustainability uh, in today's world. And Sean, you know you you founded WiseTech over 16 years ago, and you've been CEO of the company since. You know, I suppose what personal characteristics do you bring to the organisation? Well, I've been practically all my life in electronics. Yeah. So um, I've seen how it evolves and, and, and different aspects of it as regards reuse and all that. So um, like when I st before I started WiseTech, I was working in a blue chip company, um, EMC, and I used to manage their take back programs, equipment coming off lease. And at that time, it was a class as a nuisance. Yeah. People weren't sure what they could do with it, to what, where they could put it or put it back into the supply chain. So I saw that as an opportunity. So I left and I set up WiseTech at the time. And... Um, I th it is probably good timing because like legislation was coming into play, you had the whole we uh, legislation in Europe at the time where companies were getting responsible for their, their electronic waste and all that. So we worked more and more around that and we, we started reusing more and more equipment. And um, the more we looked at it, the more we saw opportunities there, yeah. particularly where, where you needed to service equipment that was in the marketplace for 10 or 12 years because people don't make it anymore. So the only place they get it from is either the grey market or from reuse. So that was certainly an opportunity that we looked in and, and uh, we still do a lot of work around that and there is a lot of opportunity there. But it's a bit like, it's turning more like the, um, the motor market now where George, some people want to buy new cars, but there's also a market for the second hand car. And the second hand car market is probably bigger than the new market. Yeah. And that's the way electronics is evolving now that people are quite happy. Like if you've a family, you've a couple of kids, you're not going to buy them all brand new laptops because yeah. more than likely they only last about two or three years anyway. So people are quite happy to buy um, equipment that's secondary in the marketplace and, and reuse that. So the, 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 the market is, the, is there for it now. So okay. like there's an appetite there for it. So that, that plays into the, the whole circular economy. It, it plays into what we are trying to do. And um, like we provide a service, everything from mobile phones all the way to data centres as regards the um, disposal of that kind of equipment. And we have yeah. markets in that area, we have markets all over the world. 
like the, the markets in developing countries that they can't afford the latest and greatest yeah. and they're quite happy to take uh, secondary equipment. So like there's a lot more markets evolving in that area. Okay. So it's, it's, it's good for us and legislation is working in our favour. Like you can't just throw out laptops anymore because there's da they're data carrying devices. Yeah. So people and companies are aware of that, that situation. So it has to be sanitised and we provide all that services. So, so from our point of view, like we're, we're certainly in a, a good marketplace. So our, our market is everywhere. Yep. So any, any, anybody that's IT enabled is our market. Mm -hmm. So you know, so it's, it's, it's all over the world. You have the health, the health industries, you have the banks, software entries, IT companies. They all need our services. Okay. So we're, we're, in, we're in a good place. Okay. And actually, just on that point, Sean, in terms of your market is, a, is everywhere around the world, you know, you've been really successful as an organisation, taking WiseTech from its base, its HQ in Cork and expanding globally. You know, you've looked west, you've operations in the US, you go east and you have operations in Middle East and Asia. Maybe just talk to me a little bit about how you've achieved that international expansion from, from Cork. Well, a lot of it came from our customers. They, they wanted a kind of uh, the global solution. Yeah. And also, we didn't want to be shipping stuff all over the world because that doesn't help the whole ESG factor. You know, so like, um, we, we, we set up in Thailand in about 2011, and we, we looked at different um, geographies out there, and we looked at Hong Kong and Singapore, and there was a company that we were working with at the time suggested that we should look at Thailand, mm. which we did at the time, and it, it turned out very well, you know. Um, and I, for even for any company that's setting up abroad, like we use Enterprise Ireland quite a lot, and we find them great. So we went to Enterprise Ireland, and we got the name of companies already set up in Thailand, and we met with a, a few of them companies, and like they gave us the, the ups and downs of, of doing business out there, and they also gave us the names of um, law firms and accounting firms, which was very beneficial to us, because laws are different in every country you go to. So as a result of that, uh, we were able to set up in 15 weeks, that was setting up wise tech, finding a premises, and the truck rolled in 15 weeks later, which is very good for a, an Asia region. At the time, it took about six months alone just to register in China. So like it, that worked very well yeah. for us. So that was the whole um, Thailand side of it. And we've had a very good experience mm -hmm. out there. We don't have any expats there at the moment. They actually operate themselves, and, and we're very happy with, with our workforce out there, and it's been quite good to us. Um, the States would be, th th like, is, is where big opportunities at the moment. It's kind of behind Europe and the world that we had we going for years while, this, while the States were just starting this journey. So um, that brought opportunity for us. And the other thing about the States is that there's no such thing as a small job. You know, if you get a PO out there like it's generally a big, and generally it leads to a global solution, okay. which, is, which is, is, is good for us. So we have four facilities out there. Again, we use Enterprise Ireland, you know, as, as a guy looking for connections, okay. looking for, um, Ways of setting up out there, and again, looking for connections is always very important. And depending on what you're doing as well, whether you're a service or finance or whatever, yeah. so you need to make sure you pick your regions and you pick it properly. So we we put a lot of emphasis on that. And as a result of that, like we're in Boston to, to cover the kind of the East Coast, we're down in um, in in Winchester in in Virginia, which kind of covers the data center area. We're in Austin, Texas, which is a growing marketplace for IT. And then you're in Sacramento, which covers the whole California, which, uh, as we know, you have the Silicon Valley, and there's a uh, necessary, and that's probably one of our biggest uh, growing facilities would, would be in that area. Okay. So, um, so, we're, so we're very happy with that, and yeah. we put a lot, of, a lot of our emphasis is there at the moment in growing that area, because there certainly is a lot of opportunity. In, the, in that area. Okay, super. Yeah. That's excellent. And Sean, you know, given your successes in terms of, you know, finding an idea, starting up a company, taking it internationally, you know, for, for others out there that have ideas or looking to expand, what advice would you give to people? Well, I suppose as, as with any company, um, make sure you have the right people around you. That's yeah. very important. And I was very lucky that way from the, from the get-go, I had some very good people okay. that would help, that grew yeah. with us and were able to scale and all that. That's very important. Um, you need to know your business. So you need to understand your business. Yeah. Um, you need to have the business plan. So you know like that if you have to go to the bank or you're, you have to get P or whatever, that mm. you're, 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 you have control and they can see that as, as, as part of your growth. Uh, you need to have a strategy of how you've got to get in there. And last and most importantly is your customer. Yeah. So you need to, uh, 
have your customer out there to what are they looking for? Are you providing the right services? Yeah. Are you of benefit to that customer? Are they, are they going to pay for what you're going to offer? Mm. All, all these parts are important. They're important from, first of all, from being able to deliver service, but also that you're setting up in the right areas and you're, you are where your customer is, okay. where your customer needs you and all that. Yes. So th they're all very important factors. Um, culture is always a good one. I think we've been looking again in that factor that we have our culture, we have a can-do attitude. Yeah. Um, we, we tend to put a lot of, of and we, we try to promote as many people internally as we can. Yeah. And in my own situation, I started in the stockroom and grew up uh, through the business of all the way to management and all that. We try to do a lot of that and it works for us yeah. because we're getting people that understand the business inside yeah. out, yeah. which is very important. Okay. And you need, or you need the outside influence as well to make sure that, that you are getting that experience. But um, like we'll be very happy with, with the people that, that we have and we continue to evolve in that area. Mm -hmm. I'd be a big advocate of continuous improvement as well. And uh, we use a lot of lean manufacturing to make sure that um, there's no waste within our organisation. Mm -hmm. And to, as I said, the culture thing is, is, okay. is, is very important. And if you don't improve and you don't continue to improve, then you're no different than anybody else. Yeah. So we always try to be different because if you're not different, you're no different. Absolutely. You know? and, and you mentioned as well EI and the importance of EI for, for, for your business and also advisors in the various jurisdictions. And I know, you know, WiseTech, you have independent non-exec directors on the board. So I get the sense that, you know, advisors, independent people, getting different views, opinions is very important to you and the organisation as well uh, on your journey. Oh, absolutely. Like, as I mentioned before, with Enterprise Ireland, we find them great, even from an educational perspective, and they're always running courses and you know, there's uh, business meetings, all that kind of stuff. But they have, I think, the six or eight offices in the States, so late time where I go visiting the US, I'll always drop into one of their offices. They're always quite willing to help you. Yeah and they're always giving us con contacts and connections. So we find that brilliant. Okay. I suppose from the board perspective, like we have a board seven or eight years now, and uh, we were scaling at the time, mm -hmm. so I thought it was important that we had an outside perspective. Yeah. So we were lucky, we, we got some very good people, like Jim O'Hara is with us, ex-Intel CEO, we have John Mullins, the was head of board gosh at one stage, and it's his own company now. Uh, Dick Lehan, who was head of, um, uh, senior vice president of global operations for EMC at the time. So, and they're still on our board. But what it does is that we have to sit down five or six times a year. Yeah. We have to prepare for it. So yeah. while you're preparing, you're looking at actually what you've been doing and how you've been growing and how things are working. Then you've got to present in front of these guys and it, like, they'll, they'll take it asunder. They'll look at this and why are you doing this and looking, does it make sense? Or because you can get very siloed yeah. when you're working in the same thing for years. So they'll look at that and they'll say, look, does it make sense? So it, it makes you think. It does. And it solidifies your, your, your yeah. whole strategy going forward and all that. So we, we find that very important. Okay. Excellent, yeah. yeah. And it does, it prevents the company from being insular and just yes. thinking uh, broader and getting those you know, external views uh, and advices are important. We've talked a lot, Sean, about the successes of, of WiseTech. I expect there was lots of challenges along the way as well, and probably most recently COVID. Can you tell me, in terms of COVID and the impact that has had on the business? It's like any business, you'll, you'll always come across challenges and you, 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 you take them head, head first and you just dive into it and you get it done. You know, so I believe a lot in, like, in brainstorming and all that kind of yeah. stuff and, and looking at uh, where we are and where we want to go and all that. Um, what COVID did for us, like we, were, we, had a, we had seen a lot of growth around that, that period, so what, what COVID did is allowed us to stop and think and reflect on where we, where we are and where we want to go. Okay. You know, so like to, it, and we did change a lot of our practices during that okay. period to, um, for growth, okay. to build again going forward, because we knew it was going to end at some stage. Yeah. But what it did as well is that, um, again, it was talking to our customers, like our customers were having problems, particularly from remote workers, mm. or if people were leaving their company and all that. The problem that it left with them is that they had these data carrying devices, and like you could have been talking about a lot of people out there having these devices. So we set our own up our platform where we work with companies yeah. and uh, we'd send out uh, packaging with um, addresses on them to send them back to one of our facilities. Okay. So they'd come back, we'd sanitise them then and either redeploy them or send them down the recycle route. So that was a big help for companies and we still do that today for companies because as we know, like you have the hybrid 
our workplace now where a lot of people are working from home. But it just protects the um, again our customers for, from any leakage into the marketplace and all that. You know, so that's a service that we provide, and it, it, it's working quite well for us in, in this. So, like, if anything, it definitely was a help to us. Yeah. And uh, we have a new growth strategy going forward. We have new, new uh, processes that we're looking at and uh, different strategies that we're trying to implement over the next couple of years. And like our goal at the moment is to double the size of the business in the next three to five years. Okay, excellent. Yeah. That's super. And I do want to touch on the growth trajectory and I'll come back to that maybe in the minute. But first off, I suppose just to say, it's refreshing to hear how you were able to take stock over COVID as well and just pause, reflect, you know, look at where you come from and what, the, you know, the, the next um, growth phase is going to look like and where you're taking the company. So that's really refreshing, I think. Um, and, you know, maybe before we talk about WiseTech's growth trajectory, in terms of the more macro view, the tech manufacturing sector, what do you see as, I suppose, the changes in that sector um, in the future? Well, the, the tech sector is huge yeah. and it's constantly evolving at, at a huge uh, growth factor. And what that generates, it generates a lot more waste as well. I think what in, in 2019, is about 50 million tonnes of e-waste hit, yeah. hitting the, coming off the market. So that had to be taken care of properly. There's about 20% of it that's properly recycled. Okay. So that's all opportunity yeah. from, our, from, from our... That's going to grow by about 3.7% annually. So you're looking at probably yeah. 70 million tonnes of, of waste by 2030. Okay. So like, there's plenty of opportunity from, from that perspective. But what we're finding with companies now is that um, they are looking at the environment. They are looking at design for reuse. Mm -hmm. And we've had a lot of companies actually visit our facilities looking at ways of, of what works yeah. in, in our stream and all that kind of stuff. So that that's definitely an important factor. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more of use components in new products going forward mm -hmm. and I think there'll be an expectation yeah. from from people that, uh, that it does happen so I think you're going to see a lot more of that so like there is a lot happening yeah. in this area it has to happen because yeah. you can't keep taking from, from the ground the whole time yeah. so, you know it, it doesn't even find out a finite number of, of of minerals that you can take from from the ground you know so like they have to evolve okay. there's no doubt about it and the other thing about the, the electronic uh, e-waste is that it degrades very slow you know, so it's important that there is markets there to make sure it's reused and recycled properly. Yeah. And I mean properly because some people just take the good stuff and throw away the other stuff. You know, there's markets there for all aspects of electronics. Like we have a zero landfill policy. Mm. And um, so we, we've homes for everything. Yeah. No. You know, and a lot of it gets melted okay. down even into the, uh, the raw material, which can get reused again. Okay. So there's markets there for all that. Super. And it sounds like all those changes actually create lots of opportunities, as you said, f for your business. And in terms of maybe just coming back to that growth tra trajectory you spoke about, you know, doubling in size over the next three, five years, how, how do you hope and what are the plans to, to achieve that growth? Or where do you see the growth coming from? Well, at the moment, we're putting a lot of uh, emphasis in the US. Okay. Because as I mentioned before, generally, if you get... Um, if you get a job in the US, it'll generally low lead to a global contract. So we're putting a lot of in emphasis on that. We put a we're, we're hiring a lot of people over there. We have over 200 people in the, in the US now at this stage. And uh, we're, we're doing a lot of work around our sales and marketing and uh, getting in front of people. So mm -hmm. that's important. Um, it's not easy because they have something similar to us. It's, it's, it's hard to get good people. Yeah. You know, so that, that takes up a lot of our time trying to make sure that we have the right people in the right places over there. But, but um, in, in it's generally positive, so we're happy enough the way we're, we're, we're moving along and happy the way this, the, our strategy is working out. Sean, it has been amazing talking mm. to you today. Thank you so much for your time and your insights. It's been a real pleasure. That's all we have time for in this episode of Business and Finance Executive Insights Series in association with KPMG. Thank you for listening. You can find more episodes of Executive Insights at businessandfinance.com.